started now. I'm Shanti, children of her. <coughs> Am Shanti means peace, universal peace be with you. I think it's rather nice, don't you? Right, where were we? Oh yes, I got as far as calling the guardians of the watchtowers. What I haven't explained, when you call each guardian, you do the evoking pentagram. Visualize blue light coming from your athemi or your wand, tracing the image of the pentagram. Then wait and visualize the guardian coming in from the distance. Visualize in your mind's eye coming in close until you can virtually see him in your mind's eye. Then thank him and go to the next watchtower. Now you've got your circle, you've called in the watchtowers, you've done the Kabbalistic cross. So now you can get down to serious work. You record and you do the, uh, what is it, oh God, Creed of the Goddess. And you use this and read it through out loud. Whenever, you, you know, the one I'm talking about, wherever you may be, once in a week, there shall ye assemble in secret and worship the vision of me, etc., etc., etc. This must be read through. Formulate what you want to do if it's an S bat. Formulate what you want to do. Um, whether it's healing, uh, you can also do readings, uh, either tarot or runic after the ritual. But when you formulate what you want to do, you then go through the witch's rune. And you call, you go through the call to Kanunas, the evocation of Kanunas. Once this is done, Close your eyes, breathe deeply, relax. Breathe in deep, hold, breathe out, let all your muscles in your body relax. Be one with the universe. Then do your readings. Now, if it is a Sabbath, of course, then you go through the Sabbaths as we've recorded them on the site. 
and after the Sabbath, put something cheerful on. Otherwise, you'll all be sitting there with your mouth corking open, looking into space, wondering what the hell that was that came through to you. So you, you got to ground. You put something lively on, something cheerful on, and feel good about what you've done. Be aware of the spirits that come in. Remember, if it comes in, with perfect love and perfect trust. The two main passwords, then they're truly really welcome. This is the only time you should reuse uh, an Ouija board. The only time you've got maximum protection. Now you can use the Ouija board to communicate with the guides, the masters and spirits that are in the room with you. It is, it can be very exciting. Some of you are on this earth for a particular reason. And you get the joy of being able to fulfill your, your role. Some of you suffer great anguish, great pains. As I said, you can acquire great power, great magic, great, great understanding of the universe. But there's no such thing as a free lunch. I was asked about second degree. Second degree is basically making your own your own tools. And he said it again, Adrian, weapons. <coughs> I've got weapons on the mind, brain here. Yeah, yeah um, that's that's just terrible. Then. Yeah, well I think of exercising them on you. <laughs> um, Thanks. <laughs> I sometimes think of exercising them on you too. But you ain't got one, you only got a death, Amy. I got a big boy, you got a sword. I do, I can use that on you. So, it's important to become one with the tools that you're using. This is our chalice. Now, I don't expect you to go and spend a lot of money and get something elaborate. You can get an ordinary glass and you can get glass paint and you can put your own design and descriptions on the side. We have Hearn design. Eh? We have Hearn. Dear is it? Oh yeah. Yeah, we, on this one we have a symbol of Hearn. Oh, which is there. Let me scroll in that. You're, you're closing in on it. Closing in, yeah. There. Can you see it there? Yeah, can. And this is our main chalice, which we toast the masters with. So, I don't expect you to get anything elaborate, but you can get a glass. Prettier the better, and you can, as I say, you can use glass paint. And you can paint the symbols all around the glass. And wouldn't that be wonderful? So you don't have to go to a lot of expense. Now for water and salt, we use our second chalice, which is usually for water and salt, for libation. Now, you don't have to use a chalice. You can use a bowl, a white bowl, and again, use some acrylic paint and do your own design around the bowl. Which is just as beautiful, just as attractive, and you will have done it yourselves. So, as you, can I put that down now? Yeah. Uh, okay. Incense burner. You can, you've got weird, weird long things. You can stick your incense, just stick in, and you can use that as incense burner. You don't have to go to elaborate incense burners. 
Now, what would you use on your altar? Well, you can use a power animal, a little statue of a power animal, which will be eventually be your carbon guardian, but we'll come into that later. Don't worry. Um, you can use a crystal as a centerpiece, as I have done. Um, pictures of Kuan Yin or Kanunas or even Bathomain, the Dark Lord, the Shadows. So that, that, that would be your altar would be set up. Some of you like the idea of making your own pentagram, a uh, pentacle. Yeah, it's a great idea, because your energy is going into making it. The man of bees, wonderful idea. I advise some of you to go into the pictures and look at Shadow Dancer's man of bees, which he done, which he has made. They are a thing of beauty. And so much so that... <laughs> Dark Raven one is weak for one. <laughs> I yeah, like I, I think they're very nice ones. Yeah, they're beautiful. What a beautiful job. She, I thought her one blew my mind that she did for me, but that was so beautiful. I can't wait to see when she's finished the pentagram what that's going to look like. That will be massive. So congratulations, Shadow Dancer. You've done a great job. And also, it might inspire Carol to do, to do some. Hey, Carol, how about getting on with some beadwork? <laughs> I want to see what you come up with, my darling. It should be beautiful, because you put a lot of care into it. I've got a feeling he's going to say something to me any minute now. So you've got a minute and forty-five seconds. Oh God, I, I've got I could read a whole chapter of the Bible for that, can't I? <laughs> this what they said. The video will be ended if you try it. <laughs> I don't want any crap like that being read. Oh, that's true. But you you all learnt and you've advanced so far and so. It's wonderful to see from my point of view. But as you advance, your body is adjusting to new energies. You must remember this. So you're going to go through torment. You're going to have pains that you can't explain. You're going to have problems which can't be discovered and you can't explain. This is your body coming in balance. <laughs> remember what I said about balancing the carcass. There are about 80 chakras in the human body. 80. Not 7. 80. And that's why I said last time, how many chakras in the human body? Oh, there's 7 chakras. No, there's not. There's 80. There's chakras for the liver. There's chakras for the heart. There's chakras for the spleen. There's chakras for the kidney. Chakras for the blood. And go on. There's chakras at the back of the body and at the front of the body. These you must understand, especially if you're doing pranic healing. A lot of you are really getting into pranic healing. I only put a video on pranic healing every two weeks because mm -hmm. I want you to absorb what I've been trying to tell you. Forty minutes have passed. Um, if anyone out there has got a sweaty sock, Give it to me, I know exactly where I can stick it. <laughs> All right, my, my friends. Thank you, my family, for letting me in. My wishes are go with you. Mary, we have met. Mary, we part. And Mary, we will meet again. Namaste.